Hi, I'm Jackson Bird, and I am five years on testosterone. Uh, I am about to go get my first injection of testosterone. Today is actually my one month on tea. I'm now two and a half months on tea. Four months, five months. I can go down to this register if I would like now. Now I am over seven months on tea. As of yesterday, I'm officially one year post top surgery. Three years on testosterone, just a couple months shy of four years on testosterone. Five years on testosterone. Five years! Actually, it kind of feels like longer, for the most part. I think I've maybe just hit this point where it feels weird that I ever lived any other way. Like, when I sit down and think about the changes, or think about, I don't know, stuff that's happened in my life in the last five years, yeah, maybe I could say time has flown by, or it feels like about five years, but trying to imagine a time when I didn't live in the world as a man. That's a little bit harder. I am gonna be making a more timeline-ish kind of video that I'll be posting next month, so look out for that then. Or if you're watching this after May 2020, I guess click that card or the link in the description box and go watch the video. Maybe after you watch this one, you should watch them both. Because that one is sort of a more general retrospective type of thing, I wanted to make another video just like sitting down to talk about changes, sort of updates, what things are looking like with my body and emotions and dysphoria. You know, just a good old fashioned tea update video. I do want to say right at the start that I am one person. I am speaking from my opinion. I am not a medical professional or a lawyer, and I do not represent every trans person out there especially when it comes to hormone replacement therapy, like everyone's experience is so different. This is what it's been like for me. This is how I have perceived and interpreted things and how I feel about certain things. Hopefully it can provide you with some insight if you are also on testosterone or maybe you just wanna learn more about what the process is like, but do not take it as like the gold standard, only path, only way things work and the only way that people think about things. Also, I am gonna be talking a lot about bodies, body image, dysphoria, also menstruation, and maybe a few other things. So I will include content warnings when those are coming up on screen, but also more importantly, there are jump links down in the description box with content warnings on them. So if there are certain topics that you do not want to hear about, you can go look at the jump links and you can jump around in the video and just watch the parts that are relevant and okay with you. So earlier on, I made a lot of transition videos, kind of like one every month for the first several months on teeth. I stopped making them as often for the same reason that most people do, which is that there just weren't as many updates to talk about. And also it wasn't on the forefront of my mind as much. I was just sort of, you know, getting used to what was a new normal for me and happy and confident and enjoying it and rolling with it. But I do remember when I was thinking about starting tea and when I was early on tea, how incredibly valuable having as many update videos from people as possible as I could, how valuable that was, because like when you are on it, you start sort of like having these benchmarks of like, okay, I'm at two months and these things are happening to me. Is that normal? And like you watch three videos and those three people don't really talk about it or maybe they have very different like body types or backgrounds to you, but then you find another video with someone more similar to you and they do have the same thing that's going on with you. Anyways, it was helpful. <laughs> And it was also helpful to see videos of people who were much further along in their process. So I thought five years is a nice clean number. It's a good milestone. I'm gonna take a few minutes to just sort of talk about how it's been for me and maybe it'll be helpful for people. But before I get into more, I just wanna take a minute to thank our sponsor for today's video, Dollar Shave Club. So if you are at the start of your testosterone journey, it's a good chance to start a new hygiene routine because let me tell you, you are about to be sweatier, smellier, and hairier than you have ever been in your life life before, probably. And Dollar Shave Club can help you out with all of that because they don't just sell shaving products. They also have shampoo, conditioners, facial cleansers, body soap, toothbrushes, toothpaste, and more. So I've mentioned this before, but I was genuinely a customer of Dollar Shave Club long before they ever started sponsoring this channel, and specifically because when I was starting out on testosterone and I needed razors to shave my face and I wanted to use more masculine hygiene products, I also wasn't being read as male in public yet. And so I was really nervous to like go to the grocery store or the drugstore and be buying these masculine products. And also it was all new to me and I didn't know what brands were gonna be right for me. So I signed up for Dollar Shave Club because it was affordable and they had like trusted, well-reviewed, well-made products and they would deliver it straight to my door so I wouldn't have to go to the store, which like dysphoria aside, 
it's a pretty good option right now when we're all supposed to be staying home and not trying to go to the store as much, so like a delivery service is real good for you right now. And now while I said that I was specifically looking for more masculine products, this is not just a company for men. None of the products are gendered in any direction. They are super happy for people of all genders to use their products. And in fact, they recently made a new feature on their website that can help you decide what products are best for you. It is a fun quiz that you can take. It asks you questions like, what are your grooming habits? What parts of your body do you shave? Do you have sensitive skin? What is your hair type? And then based on your answers, it creates a box of products just for you. So I took the quiz and Dollar Shave Club sent me a whole box of products based on my answers. I've got the shave butter and some razors and a razor, and also this prep scrub, which is my first time using and I'm really enjoying. And I've got a full-size bottle of hair and scalp shampoo and some body cleanser, and I've mentioned before, but I love the smell of all of their like shower products. <sighs> I feel like with straight up men's products, it's always like the only smell is like gunmetal. Now, obviously I am growing a <laughs> ill-advised quarantine stash right now, so I'm not shaving a ton, but I do actually still like clean up my neck and parts of my cheeks to, you know, make sure it's looking all right on the days that I might see people on a Zoom call with high enough resolution that it matters. <laughs> but anyways, if any of those products look good to you or you wanna see what you get recommended specifically for your grooming habits, you can go to dollarshaveclub.com slash jacksonbird to take the quiz and get your own customizable product box. So five years on testosterone. I have had kind of a weird, slightly non-linear journey with a lot of the typical changes. I think for a long time, I thought that there were just certain typical changes from testosterone that weren't gonna apply to me or I wasn't gonna see a lot of changes from. And then it turned out that there were a couple of different external factors that were actually prohibiting those changes in me. I mean, I think overall, I'm just never gonna be like that super masculine looking or sounding of a dude. Hormones treat everyone very differently. It depends on your genetic background. It depends on other medical conditions. It depends on your age, both like age of when you start testosterone and your age as you get older. Like there's so many different things that make it different for each person. I talked in my almost four years on T video that I did last year about how I had had uh, some changes to my body specifically with a lot of weight gain that I thought was caused by testosterone because it's totally normal to gain weight when you are on testosterone for a lot of different reasons. Your appetite is increased. You're going through a lot of the changes that like cisgender teenage boys go through, but they are also growing taller, whereas we're not. So if you put on a little extra weight and you look a little bit heavier, that kind of makes sense. I think there's also something about like our bone density. So there's more weight from that. And like, you're probably gonna gain some muscle mass. So there's a lot of reasons for your sort of your normal range of weight to be a little bit higher when you're on testosterone. And so that all seemed pretty normal to me, except that as other changes from T were leveling out and as my diet and my fitness regime weren't changing, I was still gaining more and more weight. And it wasn't muscle, it was definitely fat, which is like fine, but was a mystery to me. And so if you want more details on this, again, you can go watch the four years on T video, but basically found out with the help of my doctors that it was being caused by an anti-anxiety medication I was on, not by the testosterone. And so I changed medications and it took a long time, but eventually I did start losing weight and got back to what I think I have now leveled out to be my normal on testosterone weight range. And so this time last year, I talked a lot about how I was just feeling great about having figured that out and that I thought maybe I was getting some of the fat redistribution that happens on T, or sometimes a lot of the fat that's like on your hips or your, your glutes or your butt kind of shift to your stomach and you have less of the hourglass figure and it's a little bit more straight up and down. And I thought maybe that was starting to happen a little bit and it was, but after I made that video and as the year went on, and I even talked about a few of these things in the video, I just noticed that there were some changes that I really would have thought would be happening four years on T, specifically when I was like, like meeting people who were one year on T and had more facial hair and more fat redistribution and more muscles and all, all kinds of things like that that I just didn't have. Like I was years further than them on testosterone and seeing less changes. And then there was another thing that happened that I haven't ever talked about on this channel. And I think I will still make a whole video about it that goes into more detail at some point. But basically several times over the years, my period came back. And it was usually tied to times when I had to miss a shot. Uh, you know, around top surgery, my surgeon had me go off T. And then I would have insurance problems and I couldn't get it. And so I would maybe be a couple of weeks not on T. And so then it would make sense, I guess. But last year, it started happening more. Like I would miss my shot by a day and it would come back. Or I would not miss my shot at all. 
and there were a couple of months where it just came back every month. And I was talking to my doctor about it, we were doing blood tests, my levels were fine, my dosage had not changed, it was just a total mystery. And then I went to Camp Lost Boys, which is an awesome camp for men of trans experience, and there was another guy there who talked about how several years ago he went on finasteride, which is a Propecia pill that you can take to prevent hair loss, and how several months into being on that pill, his period came back and a light bulb went off in my head, and I couldn't believe I had never considered it. I had been on finasteride for years. I started taking it, I think, a l less than a year into my transition because my hair was thinning and I just wanted to be proactive about it. The thing to know about finasteride is that it is a DHT inhibitor, dihydrotestosterone. It is an androgen, just like testosterone is, that can cause things like hair loss, but also deeper voice and muscle mass and facial hair. So finasteride Propecia, which is like the one FDA approved pill that you can take for hair loss, prohibits DHT, which helps facial hair, muscle mass, deeper voice, things like that. And I knew that when I took it and a lot of trans men will take it knowing that it's a risk that it might sort of inhibit some of those changes that you might be wanting to see from testosterone. For me, I was just like, I cared a lot about losing my hair and I didn't feel like I needed to have like the most body hair or the most facial hair, or, you know, some of those other changes that the finasteride might inhibit. I was like, I don't think I care about those as much. But as the years went on, I just like forgot that those were even side effects of finasteride because it was working for my hair and I wasn't having any other adverse side effects. So I was just cool with it. But when this guy at camp mentioned that, I was like, oh my gosh, that has got to be what is causing this in me. And at that moment, I finally remembered all the other side effects of finasteride. And I was like, this might be why I have less facial hair than other guys who have been on T as long as me. This might be why I feel like my body fat has not redistributed in the same way that it is allegedly supposed to for some trans guys, and like why I haven't been growing as much body hair as I would think that I should at this point on T and based on the other men in my family. So I got home from camp and I talked to my doctor and decided to wean me off of it, and things have been great since then. <laughs> Definitely the period has not come back since then, but I've been growing way more facial hair, way more body hair. I feel like my voice has gone back to being about as deep as it was after it first dropped. Yeah, I feel like I've gotten this whole like renaissance of changes. I feel like I'm like two years on T again at five years on T. So it's kind of great, I'm loving it. I will just say really briefly, I'm gonna put some links to more reading about finasteride and, and hair loss in trans men and DHT and stuff like that in the description box because I know I have not done it justice. I don't wanna provide any sort of medical advice. I will just say that there's not a lot of medical advice out there on trans men and finasteride, so that's why we need to share these stories with each other. Like, my doctor didn't tell me that that was a thing that might happen from T. I had to learn that from another trans man. And that's just how so much of physical transition is with trans people. Oh, and since I went off of finasteride, I started using topical hair loss, uh, solution? I don't know. I use minoxidil, which a lot of trans masculine people might be familiar with because a lot of them use it on their faces, which is not an FDA approved way to use it, but is a thing that seems to be successful for a lot of people, helps you grow more facial hair. Uh, its actual intention is to help with hair loss. You can just sort of drip it on your head once a day and rub it in. Uh, actually, its original purpose was somehow treating high blood pressure or something, and then they discovered a side effect was hair growth, and so now it's marketed as a type of Rogaine. So I've been using that, and honestly, I think it's working even better than the finaster I did for me. And because it's topical in that way, there's none of the side effects I was having from finasteride, so good days. But yeah, I mean, combination of just being five years on and now not ingesting a DHT inhibitor all the time and having even more changes, here are some of the changes. Um, Definitely way more body hair, not way more, but it's like, I'm finally getting significant chest hair. I got this mustache now. I think I probably could have mostly grown that before, but definitely just like all of this is coming in uh, thicker and darker now. Also, my eyebrows have hairs now? Obviously my eyebrows have always had hairs, but like they're growing out more. More far-flung eyebrow hairs than I ever noticed before. And like ear hairs, nose hairs are just going wild at this point. And some of that stuff, I don't know if it's like, this would always happen at this point on T, or if it's an age thing. Like I started T at 25, I will be 30 in a couple of weeks. If I had started T at like 
17 and now I was 22, would I also be seen as many like ear and nose hairs? I feel like it's a little bit more of an old man thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's so that, that's like what I've said. It's tough to parse these things out. Like what is age? What is another medication? What is simply testosterone? And obviously it's like the age with the testosterone. It wouldn't be happening without the testosterone, but like the two combined together. My skin is like still pretty oily. I still get some, you know, pimples and acne here and there, which is increasingly weird as I noticed my first wrinkles as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like I need to find skincare that's good for both acne and wrinkles, great. I mean, speaking of which, I do think I'm looking more my age. I think in the last year I have aged a lot physically and how I look. I don't get mistaken for like a young teenager anymore. I don't think I look 30, but, <laughs> but I don't think I look half my age anymore, which used to be the case. Slightly segueing into emotional changes, crying. So crying is a thing that often when people start testosterone, they have trouble doing, and some people just forever have trouble doing it while they're on testosterone. I definitely had trouble doing it for the first several months to a year that I was on testosterone. It's another thing that's a little hard to parse out because as I was just more comfortable with life and not as sort of stressed out and dysphoric all the time, I didn't have the emotions that might lead me to like have a crying fit and just be bawling and sad all the time. But I do know like early on in testosterone, like someone in my life passed away and I wasn't able to cry and that was different. What definitely started happening a couple years in was just like welling up all the time at happy stuff. Ah, I mean, multiple times a week, I'll just sort of tear up if I see a really happy moment on a TV episode or something. <laughs> Anytime someone gets the golden buzzer on Britain's Got Talent, I just can't help it. I don't have as much of the like really intense crying over something sad. I have cried once since the pandemic has started. That was probably the first time in a long time, but it's different than it was before. And again, I don't know if that's an age thing or if it's a hormones thing. I mean, and I think generally in terms of emotional changes at this point in transition, like, yes, overall, I feel calmer, I feel more confident, I feel happier, I just feel more level, I feel like I don't have this big weight on me, but at the same time, there's a pandemic happening and I'm gonna be 30 in like a week, so I'm just a wreck right now. <laughs> and like, yeah, I definitely still deal with dysphoria and like, I don't forget that I'm trans, but it's definitely not always on my mind as much and I think I spend a lot more time thinking about what it means to be a man than thinking about being trans. And I think part of that is helped by the fact that I don't get mistaken for a woman or a girl too often anymore. Although I do have to say like, that's a recent thing in the last several months. I mean, it's not like it was happening all the time before, but like I got ladies in August, it's April now. So like, that's not that long ago. And I think I think the like, the thicker beard has helped, which is why I keep it even when I don't think it looks great all the time. But now with mask culture, we gotta wear facial coverings and the, you can't see my beard. I worry that my eyes look too feminine. It's so silly to think that, but like, am I gonna get misgendered more with having to wear masks? I We'll see. But overall, because I have not been misgendered as often, I just feel more like a normal guy all the time, which is great. And maybe because it has taken me longer to get to the point of consistently not being misgendered, I don't feel like I've gotten to the point that I know a lot of transmasculine people have where it's like once they're being consistently read as male, they feel more free to experiment with like the feminine sides of their expression or personality. And that's not so much the case for me. I don't feel the need to like experiment again with makeup or nail polish or anything like that. Like I, I think of anything over the years I have realized I'm even more masculine and like solidly man than I thought I was when I was first coming out. Although that said, among like friends and people I feel comfortable with, I am totally fine like expressing some of my interests that are not typically masculine. Yeah, you know, like last night I texted my friends a picture in which it was very obvious that I was watching Baby Ballroom on Netflix. I'm like, 
I don't care if they think that's weird for a guy to be watching that. Or even, you know, more extremely, like, I will make jokes, uh, like, um, around friends I feel comfortable with, I will make jokes about being trans in a way that I wouldn't have before. Because I think now I feel comfortable that I'm being read as a man all the time by them, that if I make a joke, it's not gonna make them see me as a woman. It's just gonna be like, it might have a little bit of a shock value to it, but it'll mostly just be funny. And, you know, it's like, here's a unique thing about me that I can joke about. You can't joke about it. I don't think I'd be comfortable having any of any cis people that I know make the same kind of jokes that I might about being trans, but in certain situations, I have fun making those jokes now in a way that I think they, they would have landed differently when I didn't feel as confident in my presentation and perception of being a man. And all of that said, I do wanna get real about one thing, which is where I am at now, facial hair wise, fat redistribution wise, deep voice wise, muscle mass, whatever, it's all kind of where I thought I would be at one year. I don't know if I was just like watching guys where testosterone took to them more quickly than it did for me, or if I had totally unrealistic expectations, or if I was just impatient, but like I really thought that about where I am now is where I would have been after just one year. And I've talked to a lot of other people on testosterone who I think think that as well, and for some of them, maybe they get closer to that, but a lot of them don't. I don't really have a positive spin on that. I think it's just like a harsh reality that I want people to be aware of. Most trans people are always gonna be posting their best sides and the, the stuff that they're proud of and, and confident about on social media. Just by virtue of like how we feel about it, we're probably not gonna be posting as much about like, this change isn't happening kind of stuff, you know? It's like anticlimactic kind of stuff to post. So you're not gonna see it as much, but I think it's really important to be said. There are some changes from testosterone that might never happen for you. And there's a lot that will, and it's just gonna take time and you've just gotta wait and be grateful for what has happened, you know? Try to, to find the, the positive sides of what has already happened. And what I will say is as dysphoria inducing as it might be, take pictures, take pictures at certain intervals because you might think that nothing has changed and then you'll look back at where you were a year before and be like, whoa, I think that can help a little bit. This was a long rambling, just sort of contemplative video, but like I said, there is gonna be another Five Years on T video coming out in May that's gonna be a little bit more artsy, timeline-esque. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you are subscribed if that sounds like something that you're gonna be into. You can also hit that bell to get notifications when new videos come out. And if you want more regular updates from me, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JackIsNotABird. And one more thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. Again, if you wanna take that quiz and get a customizable product box, you just have to go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Jackson Bird. And in the comments today, let me know if you have any questions about what my transition has been like, because I know I didn't go into like super detail on a lot of things. This was kind of a weird video. If you are on testosterone and feel like you want to share a little bit of what your journey has been like, please let us know. This is a great learning experience for all of us, whether we are on hormones or not, whether we are trans or not. And overall, uh, I hope you're all hanging in there and that you are finding a little bit of light in your day when you can. This is a really tough time. Acknowledge that it's tough, let it be tough, and, and find ways to help yourself as well. Yeah, this is not what I imagined the world would be like when I was celebrating my five years on tea and my 30th birthday, but here we are, and we're just gonna keep going. We're just gonna keep going on. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.